I would have hoped you'd learned your lesson about overplaying your position. Shall we drink on it? I don't partake. You do understand how suspicious that is to ordinary people. Did Jamie Lannister know about the Red Wedding? There are some differences between the books and the show as to Talisa or Jane Westerling's backstories, the timing, place, and reasoning behind their lovemaking and their marriage. There are also differences as to when and how Lord Rickard Karstark's sons are killed, and thus his reasoning for wanting vengeance against Jaime, which he eventually takes out on Martin and Willem Lannister. I lost another to the Kingslayer, strangled with a chain. But in both scenarios, Jaime was a prisoner. Lady Cat had gotten word that the unkilled Bran and Rickon, at least in the books, so she's heartbroken so much that she loses faith in the father above, symbolized by the moment when she lets go of her dying father's hand. So Catelyn is broken and she freaks out. Sword. She secretly frees Jaime under the promise that he'll compel Tyrion to honor his pledge to return her daughter safe and unharmed. This is a key tenet to this analysis, Jaime Lannister's pledge to Lady Cat. We'll get back to this. So the phrase in the Karstarks both abandoned Rob for breaking his marriage oath and for killing Lord Rickard Karstark. The late Walder Frey. Look at us now, Charlie. This opened up an opportunity for House Bolton. I have Tywin Lannister backing me. Who does he have? And you. The Warden of the North. No more Starks to bow and scrape to. House Bolton had always envied the place and power of House Stark, dating all the way back to the Age of Heroes. So with House Stark now in a weak position, Bruce Bolton aligned himself with Tywin Lannister and Walder Frey. Meanwhile, Jaime and Brienne were traveling south. They get caught by Roose Bolton's men, who takes off his hand and bring him to Harrenhal, where he dines with Roose Bolton. Bolton gets Jaime's oath to absolve Roose of the blame for Roose's sellsword cutting off Jaime's sword hand. And it's worth noting that the sellsword was originally hired by Tywin Lannister, at least in the books. So Roose sends Jaime off to King's Landing to earn Tywin's trust. And when they part, Roose says this. You will give my regards to Lord Tywin, I trust. To which Jaime responds with this. The Lannisters send her regards. Then the Red Wedding happens and Roose says this. The Lannisters send their regards. In the books, it's even more specific. Jaime tells Roose to give Rob his own regards, Jaime Lannister's regards. So instead of saying, The Lannisters send their regards. Roose says, Jaime send his regards. It's pretty fishy. The fact that Roose repeated Jaime's line to Rob makes it seem as if Jaime knew about the Red Wedding in advance. But did Jamie know? Let's take a look. But real quick, thank you to Christian Turner and Mtron Venger for becoming channel members, and John Livingood and Sean Scott for helping the campaign to save a child's life. Thanks, guys. All right, so we get this chat here between Jamie and Roos in the books and the show alike. Roos does not mention the Red Wedding plans here. In fact, he does not even explicitly state that he has been corresponding with Tywin. In the show, we learn that Jamie and Roos had an off-screen conversation since Jamie said this. Have they told you what they plan to do with me? Lord Bolton's traveling tomorrow as well. He's going to the twins for Edmure Tully's wedding. You're to remain here. So maybe Roos told Jamie about the Red Wedding plans during this off-screen conversation, at least in the show. But there's no explicit evidence that Roos informed Jamie of what was to go down. And it would have been risky to do so. The less people that know about a plot, the better. We'll get back to this, but that's the first clue that Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding, because we don't have any explicit proof of a conversation between Jamie and Roos in any of the books or the show. On top of that, Jamie leaves Harrenhal. He has a legendary wild fever dream. He finds out that Bran is going to be tortured, returns to Harrenhal, jumps into a bear pit unarmed and one-handed to save her, and then they journey to King's Landing together. During all of this time, Jamie never once thinks about the Red Wedding. And also, they find out about the Red Wedding on their ride to King's Landing, at least in the book. Brienne was speechless, so it fell to Jamie to draw out the tale of the massacre from the night. Did he draw it out because it was new to him? Or did he draw it out just for details? We don't know. But the fact of the matter is, the second clue that Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding is that he never once thought about it prior to the night informing him and Brienne about the massacre. Granted, this is not that good of evidence, because... Even if Jamie knew about the Red Wedding in advance, George R. R. Martin was not going to have Jamie think about it and spoil that scene for readers. So let's move on, because there is better evidence. Let's analyze this in terms of Jamie's character, his motives, and his arc. On the one hand, 
Jamie killed his father, King Ares, a man he swore to protect, and he pushed Bran. So it's not as if Jamie's against doing controversial stuff. But we have evidence to suggest that the method of the Red Wedding is not Jamie's style. When Kat asked Jamie if he sent the cat's paw, Jamie told her that if he wanted the boy dead, he would have done it himself. Catelyn's inner thoughts show us that she believed him, and so do I. Similarly, in a show only event, Jamie fights Ned, but once the Lannister guard stabs Ned from behind, Jamie does not finish him because. One of our men interfered, speared him through the leg before I could finish him. Why is he still alive? It wouldn't have been clean. So basically, Jamie is a complex character. His arc is constantly addressing what it means to be honorable, but. Jamie had the right of it. Defend the king, obey the king, obey your father, protect the innocent, defend the weak. It's too much. No matter what you do, you're forsaking one vow or another. The world, or rather humans, are complex. Jamie is a man of honor. He never names his horses, but he got a kick out of his squire naming his horse Honor in the books. I know there is honor in you. More often than not, Jamie risks his own life to cut off the head of the snake as a way to save the masses. Ares being the first example, saving half a million. The population of King's Landing. Then we've got the battle in the Whispering Wood, where Jamie saw that he was lost, rallied his retainers, and fought his way up the valley, hoping to reach Lord Rob and cut him down. And almost did. Quote, he mislaid his sword in Eddard Karstark's neck after he took Torrin's hand off and split Darren Hornwood's skull open, Rob said. All the time, he was shouting for me. If they hadn't tried to stop it, dot dot dot. You fight for the Starks, I fight for the Lannisters. Swords, lances, teeth, nails, choose your weapons. And let's end this here and now. We also saw Jamie charge Danny in Season 7 while she's standing right next to Drogon. Come on, boy. Come on. Where the fuck are you doing back there? Ending the war. Jamie convinced Cersei to use a painless poison on the Queen of Thorns, and we see a similar approach, a humane approach to war, when Jamie offered to solve the siege at Riverrun through single combat, despite his handicap and poor performance in secret sparring sessions with Sir Ilan Payne, or Braun in the show. The Blackfish denied him, but Jamie ends up ending the siege with minimal bloodshed. His post-war cleanup in the books gives us several more examples of this. He freed captives at Harrenhal, including Pia. He removed someone's head for raping her, and he ended the siege at Raventree Hall peacefully. So the third clue that Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding was because the method of it lacked honor. And Jamie tends to kill with honor, at least in terms of what he believes is honorable given the choices at hand. Now let's look at his oath to Cat. This is big. First off, Jamie had a very momentary crush on Cat as a kid, or at least in admiration for her. He respected Cat. Catelyn Stark hated me just like you hate me but i didn't hate her i admired her the love she had for her children i was a little awed by it i'm not here to trade insults your sister was a strong Don't talk about cat he respected her and he gave her his word that he would compel Tyrion to honor Tyrion's pledge to send her daughters to her safe and unharmed as the story progresses we find out that jamie is taking this oath very seriously even though he was coerced into making that pledge drunk, chained to a wall with the sword to his chest. After he gets to King's Landing, Jamie named his sword Oathkeeper, gave it to Brienne, and asked her to find and protect Sansa. I know, I know. Brienne named the sword Oathkeeper in the show, but for what it's worth, Jamie named it in the canon. Because honoring his pledge to Lady Cat was important to him, important in terms of regaining his honor. To play devil's advocate though, in the show, Jamie defends the Red Wedding in this scene. The Tullys are rebels because they're fighting for their home. Riverrun was granted to the Freys by royal decree. As a reward for betraying Rob Stark and slaughtering his family. Exactly. However, he defends it at face value. Whether he's being honest or not is open to interpretation. Because Jamie often lies and exaggerates during negotiations or when he's agitated. We know this from his scene in the White Sword Tower in the books, where he threatens Sir Boros. We see inside Jamie's head, so we know that it was a bluff. He figured that Sir Boros would have hacked him into bloody pieces. But that's how Jamie rolls during negotiations. He bargains from a position of strength and at times fakes that strength. Jamie boldly makes false threats. That's most likely what he's doing here. I'll send for your baby boy. And I'll launch him into Riverrun with a catapult. 
And that's most likely why he said this. As a reward for betraying Rob Stark and slaughtering his family. Exactly. Jamie just gets heated sometimes. I shouldn't argue about politics. You're a knight, Sir Jamie. I know there is honor in you. Now, let me backtrack. It's important to note that Jamie's pledge to Lady Cat included two things compelling Tyrion to honor his pledge to send her her daughter safe and unharmed, and second, to never again take up arms against House Stark and House Tully. It is very clear in the books that Jamie wants to honor this pledge, all of it. Jamie even delays his journey to River Run for a while in hopes of the siege resolving itself before he gets there, so that he would not be put in a spot where he has to choose between ending the siege through violence and his pledge to Lady Cat, his pledge to never again take up arms against the Starks or the Tullys. And here's a big clue that Jamie did not condone the method of the Red Wedding. Walter Frey said this. The Freys and the Lannisters send their regards. Now watch Jamie. He raises his glass, but it's not in celebration. Jamie's body language speaks volumes. The method of the Red Wedding, it saddened him. In other words, generally speaking, all of these reasons suggest that a Red Wedding type massacre is just not Jamie's style. But all of this is irrelevant, because we're not debating whether or not Jamie planned it. We're just trying to figure out whether Jamie knew about the Red Wedding plans. Here's the thing, though. Jamie pledged to return the Stark girls to their mother. I owe you a debt. When Captain Stark released you, we both made a promise to her. Now it's your promise. You gave your word. Keep it and consider the debt paid. I will return the Stark girls to their mother. It's worth noting that this is the first time in the show that Brienne refers to Jamie as a knight, as Sir. Goodbye, Sir Jamie. So this was an important moment in his character arc, and like we said, part of his pledge was to return the girls to their mother. You can't return girls to their mother if she's dead. So this is pretty good evidence that Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding plans, right? Nope. If you hear someone use this as evidence, they're mistaken, because Lady Cat was not supposed to be killed at the Red Wedding. The plans were to take her hostage. So Jamie may have known about the Red Wedding, and in theory, he could have still honored his pledge to her someday, because Lady Cat was not supposed to be killed. But don't worry, we do have pretty good evidence that Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding. We're almost there. We know that Tywin was involved, and we know exactly which phrase were involved, and in which specific parts of the plan. Obviously, Roose Bolton was in the know as well. But Cersei did not know in advance. Neither did Tyrion. Tywin said that no one was told, save those who had a part to play. And they were only told as much as they needed to know. You ought to know that there's no other way to keep a secret. Plots are not public knowledge. It makes sense. Tywin Lannister shrewd. This was a big move, and the less people that knew, the better. Roos is the same as Tywin. He's cold and calculated. So most likely, Roos did not tell Jamie about the Red Wedding plans, because there was nothing for him to gain. Jamie didn't have a part to play. Nothing to gain, and much to risk. The less people that knew, the better. But if Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding then what's up with all this? Roos may have just said it because he's a pain in the butt. He was envious of the Starks all his life, and Rob's mistakes were an opportunity for House Bolton to rise in place of House Stark. And there are two reasons why Jamie may have said this. The Lannisters send her regards. Keep in mind, Jamie is a dude who constantly makes jokes. Your bet must be lonely. Is that why you came? Slip out of that gown and we'll see if I'm up to it. <clears throat> I do like a violent woman. He uses hyperbole. Tyburn hopes your father will force the Citadel to give him back his chain. My father will make him grand mace if he grows me a new hat. He's sarcastic. Well, old Lord Karstark doesn't seem to like me. You strangled his son with your chains. He uses dry humor a lot. I dig it. You'll need milk of the puppy. No milk of the puppy. There will be pain. I'll scream. Quite a bit of pain. I'll scream loudly. He's mean at times. I believe it's my last night in this world. Is that a woman? What you do, you're forsaking one vow or another. Where did you find this beast? And he likes to get under people's skin. Poor old dead Ned. What was the name of that bastard he fathered? Brienne. No, that wasn't it. The dude just loves to mess with people. Do you know how long it'll take us to dig all those holes? I can't dig very well with one hand. So the first reason that Jamie may have told Roos to send Rob his regards may have been for a personal reason. Jamie was salty about the battle in the Whispering Wood. 
Check out the link above if you want more details, but in short, Rob Stark, the young wolf, he captured Jamie. So Jamie may have told Roos to send Rob his regards since Jamie was salty. Salty that Rob caught him, and salty that Rob wouldn't fight him. If we do it your way, Kingslayer, you'd win. We're not doing it your way. The second reason that Jamie Lannister may have told Roos to send Rob his regards is even better. Keep in mind, Roos is a northerner, the type of person who claims to have all this honor, honor of the old ways and the old gods, yet Roos is the type of person who has trashed Jamie for the last two decades for being a Kingslayer. So by saying this, the Lannisters send her regards. Or rather, by saying the book version, Jamie tells Roos to give Rob his own regards, Jamie Lannister's regards. It was Jamie taking a jab at Roos Bolton. He's basically saying, You call me a Kingslayer? Well, I may not know exactly what you're up to, but I know you're working with my dad. I know you're up to something shady. I know that you're turning your back on Rob. So before you or Rob or anyone else ever calls me Kingslayer again, go take a look in the mirror, Mr. Bolton. That's how Jamie rolls. He's a jaded, witty dude. And Roos may have also said his line as a jab to Rob. The Lannisters and their regards. Especially the book version where he says, Jamie, send the regards. Because think about it. He's giving the regards of a Kingslayer as he kills a king. Call it ironic or salt in the wounds. Either way, I dig it. But in summary, we never witnessed Roos telling Jamie about the plans. Jamie never once thought about it on their travels. And Tywin told Tyrion that him and Cersei were not informed because no one was told save those who had a part to play. And Jamie didn't have a part to play. And of course, Roos Bolton is of a similar mind to Tywin, so most likely Jamie did not know about the Red Wedding. To be honest, that may have been the reason why the show changed it from this to this. To try to avoid confusion, but it didn't work because we're dumb and we're confused. But more important than us is Lady Cat. Jamie's got to face Lady Stoneheart in the next book, and she's going to remember that Jamie Lannister sent his regards. Oh boy, I'll catch you on the flip side.